Holidays com commemorating the uh, military, and uh, as a veteran, that's nice or whatever. I mean, it's just one of the jobs that we do, but that's not even the point. You know, why do we like commemorate the military so much? You know, I mean, Neil Filler had that same argument when he's talking about uh, uh, you know all these parades, military parades, these statues to generals, you know swords and all the rest of it, you know, guns, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yet, you know, what kind of, you know, why not? Why not? I don't know. Engineers. <laughs> Dare I say doctors? Hey, poets. Come on now. Let me do that, that, that check guys. Poet. But anyway, the point is, the memorials usually go to the military. Why is that? It was so special about the military. You know? And when you consider the American military, it's kind of interesting. Americans, you had supposed to have the mightiest military, blah, 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 blah. But you do realize that America has won no wars. Of course, we can't deal with the Revolutionary War right now. We won't get into that right now. But I mean, if you want to count that, go ahead and count that. Well, that, that was before it was America, but that's neither here nor there. Well, there's a duck question, but the Constitution hadn't come in yet. Uh, whatever it was. Uh, and the Civil War is the Civil War. That's that, that's well. That's what it was. The whole Spanish-American War, War 1812. War 1812. I guess that nah, that really was okay. Yeah, War of 1812. But then you go past that. I'm talking about the, the 20th century, 21st century. No wars. Come on, World War One. That was an Allied thing. America we didn't even have a lot of troops in that. You know. Oh, World War Two. Again, Allies. <laughs> you know. What's the next war? Uh, the, the Korean things, well, all those other conflicts, you know, even World War One is not, it's not it's armistice, so it's not really a war one. So let's think, what war? America doesn't win wars. America's like thugs, like bandits. What America does, actually, I mean, it's, you know, you know, it's, it's like like what ADUS goes through or went through or continues to go through. You know, we have gangs of of supremacists, you know, coming at you. And gangs, one on one's not so good for them. But you may have gangs. And then they train. Like I read, I read someplace one time where uh, they were saying that they were if, if these white supremacists were, were were encouraging their their numbers to join the military because if they made it through, even if they went to special force, they made it through. And when they come out, they're fully trained. I mean, what's that? Uh, was it Full Metal Jacket? Was that? Uh, uh, yeah, I think it was. Um, uh, the Stanley Kubrick film where. The guy who says, who is the best, who is the name all these people? And he was all like big time snipers, you know, the, the tower here and whatever have you. What was, was the commandant? They were all trained by the Marines. So, and then you have this whole thing, and then when you get out, you can also go into a police force, but you still have guns and, and your prejudices, because when you train as a military person, you know, they, like they did in Florida one time, they had the black people as, as, target, as targets for their little blah, blah, blah pistol range or whatever it is. Well, it's the same thing, you know, you, you, you put up the latest, uh, you know, enemy and you, you target practice and you, and you make the, um, an enemy out of any other, or the other that is, whatever it is. So, what am I saying in this uh, time of, uh, of military celebrations or whatever have you? I think ADUS needs to join the, the, the fray, but not with bullets, not with arms. Not with any of them. We, this is the point. This is so f fantastic, magnificent. You know, there are other strategies. Remember, military is a hard way. You know, just like religion is a softer way, right? Uh, athletics is another way. Uh, um, arts is another way. Well, guess what? They may, these rednecks, whatever, they may go into military because it's like you follow orders, boom, 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 boom. But the arts is something different. So I actually, even if, let me give you a great idea. Forget all the other things. You can figure out your own, for your own, own thing. Let's, let's say I'm getting more interested in, in, again in, in football. It's great. Well, just athletics, when they could not have these press conferences. So if the brother gets up there, he has a big ADOS on his shirt, and under it, you know, our, our, our www.ados101.com, right? Then that's shown, you know, all over. They don't have to say anything. They said, well, somebody, so they ask, what's the ADOS? Or we're hashtag ADOS. What's that? Oh, and then it says, Oh, yeah, yeah. Go to the website and ask them. We're talking sports right now. Well, ask me later, somebody. And you just keep on going. 
Well, you just said keep it. Let's go to the website. Then. Better people. I, I like the t-shirt. I like the concept. Go find out about the concept. Everything. You see what I'm saying? And then you have this whole other thing, like um, in, 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 in my work in Zimbabwe and this, this township, and then, and whatever. They have this because they come from clans and they have lineage names, you know, clan names. I, I, we call them lineage poems. So why can't ADOs have lineage poems, you know? If you find out your lineage thing, then you do a poem about your lineage, name all the people, blah, 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 you know, that whole thing. You can have poetry competitions, you know? Like, uh, you know, uh, 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 this is this is reparations night, reparations poetry, right? Uh, it's getting kind of loud, so let me let me just try to wrap this up real quick. This one is one I really like. Like, say if you go on, like, I love, when I get to the States, I really got to find out to get to a Corey Hogan, you know, uh, uh, Comedy show. Anyway, with the one fifty people, if they, if 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 you know, who used to do this in music? Uh, Larry Graham used to do this. He's a bass player, right? And he would invite when he goes to a community or goes to a concert. It'd be, they invite other bass players to come and they have a bass off. You know what I mean? Well, somebody like Corey Holcomb or somebody like that, who's like somewhat conscious but like really funny and, and irreverent. But anyway, he would invite as his gigs. You know, okay, you have comedians in the neighborhood. You have, well, we're gonna have a thing before I come or sometime during there. Maybe maybe at some radio interview when he's doing. Say we have well, name your five best comedians when I'm coming through. Whatever have you, they gotta show up and we're gonna we're gonna do reparations jokes. You know, they got they we give you two best reparation shows. Everybody to do you know your three best reparation shows. You have two or three people do that. It's a competition, whatever. I don't know. You'll figure it out. It's doing you a discipline. You know. What I mean? Okay, that's all I need to say. Uh, I mean, me T from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet. Let me know what I only suspect as I drink some uh, grape grape juice and, and uh, coconut water. From a desk of the ADOS, that would be an American descendants of chattel slavery.